Yo, hey, so I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about transport, cellular transport, how things get in and out of a cell. You, you have to keep in mind that um, that things don't just go in and out of a cell just because there are some science and some reasoning behind that on how that works. Now, there are some things because of what they're made out of and because of what the cell membrane is made out of. Um, they interact a little differently. Um, it seems like almost as if there's no control over those things versus other things that you really want to get inside the cell that can't get inside the cell without permission. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And you just have to keep that in mind that that there are reasons for this stuff. And I know you're thinking, you know, hey, Mr. Nixon, I just want to memorize this for the test. And that's cool. Um, that's OK. You can memorize this for the test, but um, just be prepared to apply it later. So memorize whatever you want to your heart's content, but you're going to need to apply some of this later and you will see it what I'm talking about later on. So let's talk about this sheet that I handed out to everybody, this little happy dude. And uh, it also has another side to it as well. We're going to start with this side right here. And uh, this right here talks about the membrane structure. And you have to understand what the cell membrane is made out of. It's made out of a double layer of phospholipid. And a phospholipid is in the lipid family. So it's, it's, it's fat, it's oil, it's, it's, it's that group of, of family members. And uh, when you have a double layer of fat like that, um, things that are soluble in lipid can pass through the cell membrane um, without a problem. They don't need permission. They just go straight through. That's why a steroid is so effective against a target cell because a steroid happens to be in the family of lipids. And so it passes right through the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane with no problem. Another thing that you'll see here are carrier proteins and pore proteins. And pore is not talking about being broke. Pore is like a, 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 a hole, a small tunnel. There are some proteins that we call leak gates on um, cells like neurons. And these leak gates allow ions to just go in or out. I mean, they just constantly leak ions the whole time. Um, that's just what they do. The door is always open. It's like having the air conditioner running, but you got a window open. You can see that AC going right through that window. But then you have some transport proteins that they're really cool because there are things that you want to get in your cell or out of your cell that are not lipid soluble. So you have these transport proteins to make that entrance and exit happen, which is pretty cool. Now, in the middle of your chart, you have something that says types of transport. You have passive and active. Now, passive is uh, is all about free. It's no energy utilized, which is great. You know, um, in our world, it's all about the dough, okay? Um, how much food I can, uh, like later on tonight, uh, when I get back into town, I'm going to need to get some dinner. And I would love to say that I'm going to cook tonight, which I would prefer to cook. That's that's in the mood that I'm in. But by the time I get back into town tonight, I'm probably going to be tired and I'm probably not going to want to cook. So I'm not going to fool myself. I'm probably going to stop by the store and grab something that's going to be either pre-prepped or easy or something to go alongside something. I'll probably go like get like a roasted chicken and then I'll cook some veggies and, uh, and make a salad or something like that. Bottom line is I'm going to have to pay for that stuff. When I get to the cash register, they're not going to let me pass the cell membrane of the double doors without shelling out some dough. Um, there's going to be some currency exchange for the vittles that they're going to give me back. Your cells, instead of using dough, they use ATP. So ATP, yeah, we call it energy, but it's almost like it's currency because if you ain't spending the ATP, you ain't going nowhere. So um, with passive transport, you don't need currency. It's a free trip versus active transport. That is not free. You are spending ATP. Passive, no energy. Active, energy. That's why it says what it does. What's interesting is that with passive transport and active transport, they talk about concentration gradients. 
Let me pause for a minute to explain a concentration gradient. Um, if you've ever ridden a bike, growing up riding bikes, our favorite place to ride a bike was a hill. Not because you had to ride up the hill, but riding down the hill. Why is riding down a hill so much fun to kids or an adult? Because when you go at from the top of the hill, thanks to there being a gradient, a slope, a gradient, thanks to the gradient, you don't have to work to ride. Instead, you get on the bike, you take your feet, you take your hands off the brakes, and your bike will roll from the top of the hill all the way to the bottom of the hill. Why? Because there's a gradient. You will move from a higher place to a lower place with no problem whatsoever because there is a gradient. In a concentration gradient, you have a high concentration of something, and then you have a location where there's a low concentration of something. And naturally, that substance will move from where there's a high concentration to where there is a low concentration, just like you would go from a high elevation to a low elevation while riding a bike. So with concentration gradients, that just means that you're riding the gradient from high to low. Substances like to go from high to low. That's just how it works. So with passive transport, substances, passive transport works because substances like to go from a high concentration to a low concentration using that concentration gradient. Active transport helps us when high concentrations ain't going to work for us. Active transport helps us when you need to move against the concentration gradient. In other words, there is a high level of something and you're trying to move it out there with it. If you don't use active transport, guess what? The high level of stuff out there is going to come in here. You're not going to be able to do what you need to do. So active transport helps you move against the grain, against the gradient. Active transport requires energy. So when you're trying to go up a hill on your bike, guess what? You don't just roll up the hill. That only happens in cartoons and magic tricks. If you're trying to roll up this hill, it ain't going to happen. You're going to have to pedal. You're going to start at a place that's at a low point of the gradient, and you're trying to get to a place that's high on the gradient. So you pedal your bike all the way up the gradient to the top. That's active transport. It requires energy. It requires ATP. And you're moving something from a low concentration to a high concentration using con going against the concentration gradient. Um, when you start talking about active transport, there's several different types of active transport. And that's when you flip this dude over and you can check out some different types of active transport. One type of active transport is a pump. This example here is a sodium potassium pump. Um, believe it or not, this is kind of like a, almost like a co-transport or con-transport. Um, this is when you're trying, this is when I exchange something. So I exchange this sodium, I exchange this sodium for your potassium. In other words, I'm trying to bring potassium in, so I have to put sodium out or vice versa, or maybe I need to bring sodium in, so I put potassium out. Either way, I have to make an exchange. One ion is going to go out while the other ion is going to go in. And it won't happen unless I make that exchange. That exchange actually requires ATP to work. Another example of uh, active transport is exocytosis and endocytosis. Now, exo means out. Endo means in. So exo means out. Endo means in. Exocytosis is what happens when a cell is taking something and putting it out. Endocytosis is when a cell is taking something and bringing it in. So exocytosis, exo out, like an exoskeleton is when the skeleton, the, the framework, the sta stability uh, uh, or the framework that brings stability is on the outside. That's why it's called an exoskeleton, skeleton on the outside. Endo means inside. So exocytosis is when a cell says, hey, I've got this thing and I don't want it inside of here. So I'm going to wrap it in a vesicle and then that vesicle is going to move it 
out of the cell and it's going to kick it out uh, versus endocytosis is when it sees something and it wraps a vesicle around it and then brings it into the cell. Um, exocytosis, you're going to see this again. We're going to talk about exocytosis um, a lot and endocytosis because when we talk about exocytosis, this is how your nerve cells make your muscle cells move. Your nerve cells use exocytosis to release neurotransmitters that go and talk to the nerve, uh, to, that go and talk to the muscle cell. Endocytosis is when we receive something, we see something, we bring it in. So like a white blood cell, when it encounters a pathogen, it wants to engulf it. It actually takes its membrane and wraps it around that substance, draws it in, and it pinches off that membrane into a bubble and it turns it into a vesicle and it draws it in to destroy that pathogen. That's endocytosis. So exocytosis is the cell getting rid of something or secreting something, releasing something. Endocytosis is that cell bringing something inside of itself. Endocytosis also breaks down into two different types. When you look down here, there's phagocytosis and there's penocytosis. Phagocytosis is how cells engulf solids. Penocytosis is how a cell engulfs liquids. Oftentimes, when you see penocytosis, the cell is trying to engulf water. It'll see a water droplet and it's trying to wrap itself around to bring that water droplet in to do whatever it's going to do. Whereas with phagocytosis, it's trying to engulf an actual solid structure. So if it's a white blood cell, it may be trying to engulf a pathogen or it may be trying to engulf something else that happens to just be a solid structure. Either way, endocytosis is it seeing something on the outside, drawing it in. Exocytosis is something sending it out. And if it is pulling something in, if it's a solid, it uses phagocytosis. If it's penocytosis, it's because it's trying to pull in a liquid. Lastly, talking about uh, passive transport, going back to this side. There are three types of passive transport that are listed here. It's diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. In diffusion, that was the one when I was talking about things just move from a high concentration to a low concentration using a concentration gradient and a semi-permeable membrane. Now, the semi-permeable membrane that we're talking about specifically for this test and specifically for when you're reading chapters about a cell is talking about the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane in which it's semi-permeable that it allows certain things in and out. If it doesn't want it in, it doesn't want it in. If it does want it in, it does want it in. So everything doesn't get its way and get inside the cell. As a matter of fact, there's some viruses that try to get inside your cells, but they have very a, a lot of difficulty getting inside your cells simply for the fact that your cell is semi-permeable and the way that it's built, which you can check that out when you go back to chapter four to look at um, cell um, cells. Now, um, another thing about diffusion is that typically when your cells are using diffusion to get something, that substance doesn't require... Uh, any help to cross the cell membrane. There's a high concentration of it outside the cell. There's a low concentration on the inside of the cell. Therefore, thanks to the law of diffusion, that high concentration moves into the cell at a low concentration using the concentration gradient. An example of this are certain ions. There are certain ions that come into the cell with absolutely positively like no problem whatsoever because of diffusion. Um, one thing that you definitely want to use for diffusion specifically are gases like oxygen. Oxygen is a perfect example of diffusion. Oxygen will diffuse into the cell. Carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cell. Why? Because there's a higher concentration of oxygen outside of the cell than there is in the cell. And there's a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the cell than there is outside of the cell. Therefore, they will use diffusion. Because oxygen and carbon dioxide are actually lipid soluble, they don't have to ask permission to go in and out of the cell. And the cell doesn't mind that one bit because it uses oxygen and it hates carbon dioxide. The end on diffusion. Next is osmosis. Osmosis is exactly like diffusion, except it uses water. So osmosis is sometimes referred to as the diffusion of water. Um, osmosis is when water moves 
from one location to another location following um, high solute concentrations. So you'll have water over here and water will go over there if the amount of solutes over there is higher than over here. Water always follows the solute concentration. That's why people often, um, that's why you hear them say that if you were stranded out in the middle of the ocean, that um, if it's salt water, you wanna make sure that you're not stuck in the water, that you wanna find something to get on and float in the water. Not just simply because, um, what is that giant shark movie, that prehistoric shark movie with John St Jason Statham in it, with Megadon or something like that. Not just because that thing is out there trying to swim around and swallow you whole, but the fact that you're surrounded by salt water. And because of osmosis, there are way more salt solutes in the water around you than there is in your body. Therefore, the water in your body due to osmosis, the water in your body will actually leave your body and go into the ocean instead of the other way around because water follows solutes. So because there's a higher concentration of solutes in the water that you're swimming in, the water in your body will leave your body and go into the ocean. That's why when you're in the bathtub, your fingers and your toes get all pruny. Because when you're in the bathtub, you're not in the bathtub with salt water. You're in the bathtub with fresh water, which means that you have more solutes inside of you than you do in the bathtub. Therefore, the water will leave the bathtub and try to go inside of you. And it gets in your skin and it turns your skin all pruny. That's osmosis. Lastly uh, is facilitated diffusion. And facilitated diffusion, basically, it uses transport proteins. So in facilitated diffusion, you really want to bring something in. The problem is it's not soluble to the cell membrane, but it's a good thing and you want to bring it in. So all you have to do is just open a special tunnel to let that thing in. It's kind of like um, I remember I went to a building and they had these trucks in the building and I was looking around and the guy finally noticed that I was looking around. He started smiling at me. He was like, you're trying to figure out how we got these giant trucks in this building that only has doors. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to figure that out because there's like four doors to get in this building. And all of these doors are like single doors. Like I, I can, I'm as, as thin as I am. I was on, I can, you can only walk through that door one person at a time. So how'd you get these giant monster trucks in the building? And then he said, I'll show you a secret. And he showed, took me out to the front of the building. And it turned out that the, um, the panels on the front of the building, all the glass panels, they slide, they slide, then they unlock and then they open. And so the whole front of the building can actually unlock and open. It was like a freaking transformer. And that's how they were driving the trucks in and out. He said, it's really dangerous doing that. He said, we almost broke a panel of glass. He says, this is the last time I ever do this, but it's worth the publicity and it's worth the project that we're working on. So there was a special door on the building wasn't really a door. It's just the way that the contraption worked. And the glass on the front of the building could open up and it could let the vehicles in. It wasn't even a showroom, which they do with showrooms, but this was not a showroom. This was just a regular business. So these doors open. They were like transport proteins. It's the same thing like um, I've got a door here in my lab right now. This door if something is too wide and we can't get it through the door, this door is specially made with like this uh, second door on it and you unlock it. Actually, yeah, forget it. See that door over there? Yeah, it's got a second part on it. So when we bring in autoclave or we have any number of different things back there, those things are too big even to fit through that door. And that's a pretty wide door. Um, two of you could walk through that door together holding hands. But when you unlock that other part of the door, it makes it wide enough to fill, fit like a deep freezer through or an autoclave or sport protein. It's just a door in the cell membrane and it allows diffusion to take care of the rest. That's why it's called facilitated diffusion. It facilitates the diffusion that's taking place. It's just a door, man. Just a door. You know, just the facts, man. Just the facts. All right. So that's transportation, man. Uh, that's cell transport. That's that's all I got for you. Ask some questions about, you know, um, transport, cellular transport. Those are the basics of cellular transport. We will apply all of that um, through classes to come and you'll see it coming through. So um, aside from that, holla back. We'll see you soon. This is.